Bear with me one moment while I can uh, work this out. It's a good thing I work in IT. Uh, there you go. Thank you. Good, thank you. Uh, so good afternoon. As, uh, as Sydney said, my name is Tom Fry. I'm General Manager of, uh, of BIOS IT uh, out here in the APAC region. Um, so, so far today we've had uh, some excellent presentations on the science and uh, the usage of, of high performance computing. Uh, I'm going to take a little shift and look more towards the technology that underpins the science um, and also have a look at where that technology is heading today and some use cases of, of where we've been integrating that on a, on a global level. Um, so please forgive me the, the blatant sales pitch but that's what I do for a living so you'll have to put up with me for a little while. Um, for, those of those, for, uh, excuse me, for those of you who are here today and don't know of BIOS IT, um, I'll just take a few minutes um, to give you a very brief background on that. Uh, so in short, we're a, a global high performance solutions and, and managed service provider. Um, the key focus of our organization is high performance computing. Um, whether that's in academia and research or oil and gas or financial services, um, media, defense, we kind of spread ourselves across many, many different industries. Uh, we also play heavily in the enterprise space and we do a lot of work with um, uh, managed service providers as well as individual organizations where we take our, our know-how and our pedigree from the high performance computing market and kind of take those tools and techniques and technologies through to the everyday data center and give our customers the competitive advantage that they require. So briefly looking at us by the numbers, um, it all began uh, 25 years ago back in London. Um, at that time we've managed to grow quite substantially on a global level and now have integration centers across three co uh, continents. We have offices in nine countries around the world and from those nine offices we service 60 different countries. Um, we have an annual uh, turnover of uh, in excess of $100 million US. Um, and at the same time, we have a global workforce of around 200 people. Um, for me, probably the most important number in this slide is the number one. Um, we, back in 1992, when we set up business, we joined up with a company called Supermicro, who I'm sure many of you have heard of, and we were their first partner. We were the first company ever to join up with, with Supermicro, and we remain their longest standing partner today. Um, because of that history, we have a very, very close relationship with them. Um, so close, in fact, that when they went public in 2007 on the NASDAQ, there were seven people present to ring the bell. Six of them were super micro directors, and the remaining seventh person was our managing director. From our beginnings in the UK, uh, we spread over into Europe and further uh, in the same sort of direction over to, into India. We then expanded into uh, the States where we set up an integration center in, uh, in New York. And then four years ago, um, we moved out to, uh, to Australia. In this year, uh, in 2017, we're exhibiting in 12 different countries around the world as well. So we have world-class build facilities. As I say, we've got three integration centers. Everything we do is bespoke. Everything we do is uh, tailor-made to our customers' exact and individual requirements. We then build to the very highest quality. Um, our build quality is something that we take very, very seriously and something we're very proud of. Um, so high in fact that even our vendors, both software and hardware, come to us for our build services. So over 25 years we've progressed from the humble beginnings of just uh, delivering individual components. Um, we then went on to building fully built solutions and now today and for the last 10 years probably we've been building ready to deploy, uh, to deploy clusters. We've never really lost sight, though, of the core components of what we do, um, that being compute, storage, and interconnect. Uh, last year, we delivered over 9,000 servers and 65 petabytes of storage, um, all of it tied together with either InfiniBand or Ethernet or OmniPath. Sorry, Sudo, I had to say that. As part of our dedication to the future of HPC, um, each year we sponsor a team at the ISC uh, Student Cluster Competition. Um, run actually by our friends here at the HPC Advisory Council. Uh, back in 2014, uh, we partnered up with the guys from the Edinburgh Parallel Computing Centre and we took gold, which we're very proud of. 
We managed to set a, a world record at that time of 10.14 uh, teraflops within 3 kilowatt power envelope. The following year we went back and we did it all again with uh, JMI University from, from Delhi. Um, again we set a new world record of just shy of 10.8 of teraflops. Um, and this particular cluster, if it was scaled out to or scaled up to a, a larger version, would have actually been good enough to have reached number four in the green 500. But we are more than well aware that achieving top performance is one thing. Um, but from researching the market, from speaking to our customers, uh, and from learning from them, we know that reliability and continuity of service is what matters most when it comes to your cluster. As many of you know, building a cluster is not a simple process. Uh, bringing the right technologies together in just the right way is, is absolutely critical. Um, achieving that for us starts and finishes with rigorous testing and uncompromising testing. Um, it starts with each and every component that goes into the cluster, um, then a full suite of performance tests once it's built um, and configuration is complete. And this will ensure see, that your cluster works and continues to work the way that it should uh, until the end of its life. As part of our value add, um, we also offer remote access prior to delivery so that you can perform your own performance, uh, sorry, your own acceptance tests uh, and iron out any bugs while the equipment is still in our labs and under the uh, uh, care and attention of our loving engineers. Um, only once we're 100% confident that uh, your cluster is ready to deploy do we actually then um, uh, ship it and configure it and install it if that's what you require from us uh, and then allow you to perform your own performance tests on site before we hand the keys over to you. Our tried and tested project management and delivery process means that you can trust us to, deli uh, to deliver your shiny new toy um, while you guys concentrate on what you do best, which is obviously the science side of things. As part of the process, you get a dedicated project team whose first step is to work out with all the stakeholders involved um, on a, an agreed project plan. Once this is in place, our team will manage all facets uh, like quality management, uh, risk management, time management, and maintain clear and open lines of communication with you throughout the entire uh, integration process. Sometimes it is unavoidable that uh, things do go wrong, um, but we work very closely, very transparently with all of our clients to ensure that we can mitigate the impact of any uh, unforeseen circumstances. As a point of, uh, of note, we're also one of only 40 organizations on a global scale who are uh, certified Intel cluster ready. Um, we take our clusters very seriously um, and by being certified with this you, you can trust us to deliver the right solution for the right application. So many of you won't have heard of BIOS IT and how does a, a little company like us compete with the big boys for, for two and a half decades? Well, we've done this by being a global leader in leading edge technologies. Um, we're so much more than a solution builder or a cluster assembler. assembler sorry. Um, we're a design house and a pioneer, and we have a number of uh, world's first technologies that we can claim blagging rights to. A uh, couple of note, the world's first GPU blade. Um, we co-designed this with Supermicro uh, many years ago um, to respond to a specific, uh, specific requirement from one of our biggest customers, and that's CERN in Switzerland. We can also claim uh, world's first enterprise-grade enterprise ARM server, um, which was codenamed Viridis. Uh, back in 2012, we partnered with a company called Calzada, um, and hand in hand, we designed a 32-bit uh, system, which was running uh, at five watts per node, extremely low power, and we were able to put 48 of these nodes in a 2U chassis. Actually, just talking with Andreas here from Pawsey earlier on this, this afternoon, um, we actually gave Pawsey remote access into our ARM cluster at the time, so they could test it for the early stages of, um, I think, the storage side of, uh, of the SK project. So that ARM cluster was set up in the BIOS IT labs, um, an environment and resource which is uh, available, freely available to anyone that wants to use it. Um, should you wish to test your application um, on new technologies that you might not have access to in your own data center, we can make those freely available to you. In the labs today, and what we're seeing of, uh, of prime importance to most people, um, are platforms built on the very latest chipsets. Um, from different, different vendors, different architectures. 
We've got select, uh, sorry, solutions on next generation Intel Xeons, on AMD Epic, uh, on o IBM Power8. Uh, also of note, we've got full NVMe storage solutions uh, and industry leading GPU accelerated systems as well. Um, we also have a host of other different uh, custom built appliances that we've put together, um, depending on what our customers are, are looking at at the time. So a bit of an insight if you haven't done your own Skylake versus uh, Epic benchmarking. Um, our guys back in the labs have been playing with, um, playing with these systems for quite some time. Recently, um, we've been running AMD's flagship 7601 chip, which is the 32-core, 2.2 gig, up against Intel's Premier offering the 8176, which is a 28-core, 2.1 gig. Uh, this matchup has been described as some as the Mayweather versus McGregor of the IT world. Um, as you can see, running stream on the, the right-hand side there, the Epic chip comes out with quite considerably better memory bandwidth. Um, but on the pure processing side, on the right-hand side here, the floating point operations, the, uh, the Intel chip uh, outperforms by almost double. So when it comes to determining, I guess, sorry, any questions? Well, you know, that's a sign of a really bad design by Correct. <laughs> okay. So, so what I was about to go on to say is actually then what it comes down to is profiling your, your application and working out where your bottlenecks are, which application, uh, so which uh, architecture is best suited to you. Um, we're seeing that many customers obviously aren't able to get their hands on the latest chips from, uh, from, from the manufacturers or, or platforms available. So as I said, our labs, we have this kit set up running right now. Um, so if you're interested in testing both architectures and seeing which one your application runs better on, um, please come and see us. We're just outside. Uh, when you have your next cup of tea or coffee, and come and have a chat. Um, as a side note, actually, we're seeing that some of our customers are configuring hybrid clusters uh, with some AMD-based solutions and some Intel-based solutions, and then provisioning um, their applications across those for specific workloads. So a quick look now at some of the hardware we have on offer. Um, we already have solutions shipping based on Perling and, and Skylake. These are quite obviously super micro uh, appliances here. A um, couple of the Fat Twin solutions provided in a, a four or eight node solution in a 4U. As always, uh, from Supermicro, there is a, a comprehensive range of kind of ahead of market solutions. Um, as always, their website is confusing as hell. So um, thankfully at BiosIT, we are fluent in Supermicro. So if you need a translation of their website, then uh, we are available for that service free of charge. With regards to AMD, um, very soon to be available 1U and 2U Epic-based systems. Um, of note, probably with the, the 1U especially, uh, eight memory channels um, giving up to four terabytes of RAM within a 1U solution, which is uh, fairly hefty, of course. Both of these solutions, full NVMe support, so 10 NVMe in the 1U and 24 in the 2U. We also have um, NDA details of a 4U solution that's going to make use of the 128, PC, uh, 128 PCIe lanes, um, which will be out, I would imagine, in the next quarter. Next up, um, IBM Power8 solutions. Um, the most important feature of this, really, I think, is the NVLink uh, connectivity between the four Pascal GPUs and the two CPUs themselves. Um, gives 80 gigs throughput around the whole system. Um, giving it an enormous advantage over anything else in the market. 48 NVMe drives in a 2U. Uh, industry leading density, it doesn't really need too much explaining. Um, we have one of these guys set up in our, our uh, labs as well. This is coming soon on the Supermicro website, but we do have these available for testing. So again, if you want to see what NVMe performance can bring to your application throughout, then give us a shout. We briefly touched on uh, Pascal GPUs with re uh, regards to the IBM solution, um, but if Pascal isn't on your radar but you're looking for very high GPU density, um, great solution here. Um, it's 11 GPUs on a single complex in a 4U solution, so it provides great acceleration capabilities even just as a standalone solution, um, even if not part of a larger cluster. Whilst talking about GPU, um, I'd, like you, I'd like to introduce you to, to Anna which is our neural, uh, artificial neural network accelerator. 
She's not quite Samantha from the movie Her, but uh, she's definitely getting closer. Um, scalable, so we can start at one or two or three GPUs, up to four in a, in a one U or eight in a four U. Um, Pascal ready right now, and when Volta's out, it will also be ready for Volta. So if uh, you're looking further into the future of what's available, that's kind of next step for this. Um, and it comes preloaded with ma many of your favorite uh, deep learning frameworks. Um, so it's kind of ready to go, ready to train, um, taking out most of the hard work of, uh, of that side of things. Um, BiosIT is actually a, an NVIDIA elite p partner on a global scale, so we're fully certified to provo provide both their DGX1 and their DGX station uh, appliances there. These guys come fully loaded, so there's no scalability, but um, obviously great processing power. So we've lived and breathed at the, at the bleeding edge of, uh, of technology for 25 years, and we're very accustomed to uh, helping organizations tiptoe through the minefield of exploring new concepts of computing. Um, we find ourselves in this position again as a, a new wave of, of, of computing power kind of starts to, uh, to break in. Um, and we're really helping people explore how to deploy machine learning and deep learning into their own environments. Um, we're collaborating locally with many, many different partners in many, many different uh, industries. Um, we're seeing cognitive computing being experimented with in all sorts of areas from uh, manufacturing through to drone-based pipeline and uh, electricity cable integrity. Um, we're looking at unmanned farming vehicles. Um, more in the world of sciences, we're looking at uh, molecular, molecular behavior and embryo screening. Um, plus, in the, in the more enterprise space, we're, we're talking with um, financial services companies about compliance and how they can integrate their uh, customer service experience and chatbots and all that sort of uh, area is also of, of, of a huge interest to us and, and growing rapidly. Uh, also, facial recognition and security as well. One great result we've had is actually uh, with a company called Intelligent Voice, based out of, of Cambridge in the UK, um, and together we've built the world's fastest speech recognition appliance. Um, this appliance can actually record 400 calls at once, and in real time it can turn that into text, index it, and an, uh, analyze uh, at the same time. Um, at NVIDIA's GTC conference in 2016, it won an award for innovation, and was actually used to record the entire conference at the same time. So we also work with Mellanox. Um, we've been working with them across the globe for many, many years. Um, in brief, they do some very cool networking stuff, but there's a couple of guys at the back there that can tell you far more about it. So uh, I think I'll leave that for Ashrat for tomorrow. So the last technology I wanted to, to showcase um, is, is vScaler. Um, vScaler is our own OpenStack-based HP as a service, HPC as a service appliance. Um, we've developed an official distribution, and it's specifically designed with that in mind. Again, there are a few people here who are far better suited to tell you all about OpenStack than me, so I'll leave it to them. Um, but we're seeing a huge, huge shift in the way that researchers are demanding their resources. Um, clusters nowadays need to be flex flexible and agile, um, two concepts which supercomputing is definitely not used to. Traditional HPC had a fairly finite list of, of workloads as well, and today that list has exploded in a way that I don't think anyone could have foreseen. Um, and this explosion means that the way that we're delivering HPC to our clients has, has had to shift uh, in order to keep up. Today's workloads are definitely far more highly demanding of the in infrastructure upon which they run. And delivering a cluster via OpenStack re re uh, responds to those demands and enables users to spin up environments specifically tailored to their own requirements at the touch of a button. Private or, or hybrid cloud solutions have, have opened up brand new possibilities um, for many of our HPC clients. Um, things like automated provisioning, multi-tenancy, uh, data isolation. We're also seeing huge strides forwards in technology to keep up with the ever-increasing demands of high-performance computing. Uh, in, in addition to NVMe, um, we're also seeing uh, high-performance non-volatile flash from Intel with 3D Crosspoint, um, or Memory One from Diablo Technologies, um, which is accessed directly via the memory, uh, memory, channel, uh, memory bus for drastically reduced latency. 
The way we look at storage in HPC is, is changing as well. We're seeing the use of online archives, uh, and we're also seeing a much wider adoption of object storage. So what is vSCALAR? Uh, in short, it's a ubiqu ubiquitous cloud um, for all deployments. Um, it's a bare metal HP cl uh, HPC cluster, or a Hadoop cluster, or a deep learning cluster, or if you need, all of the above. Um, it's provisioned by the user through a self-service portal, and it's all wrapped up in pro public, private, or hybrid cloud solution. Freescaler gives you HPC on demand at the touch of a button. We're all set up for big data too, as well as deep learning. And it's delivered worldwide across a dark fiber network. Um, allowing you guys to send data to and from Australia to the UK, to states, the rest of Asia, um, any way you need to at the blink of an eye. So what have we done with all our know-how and our, our technology? Um, I wanted to move on now to um, talk to you about a few of our most interesting deployments uh, and what we've helped some of our customers to achieve by doing that. So we'll start with CERN. Um, CERN we have an incredible ongoing relationship with. We've been selling into them for more than 15 years now. Um, over the last couple of years alone, we've delivered 50 petabytes of storage and over 20,000 Xeon cores into them. Um, coming back to our life as a, a disruptive technology bleeding edge specialist, um, over the years we've introduced CERN into many, many new technologies. Um, ARM being one of them, Open Compute another. Um, and on an annual basis, we constantly deliver to them latest generation pl platforms so that they can test far ahead of the market and make sure that they are always one step ahead. Uh, Montana State University in, in, in the US, um, interesting case for us. So Montana needed to centralize their entire HPC environment uh, and make it easily accessible to their, their students and their researchers. Um, we went in there, we configured and designed and, and worked very hard and ended up deploying a highly available Lustre solution which uh, was augmented with the fl flexibility of both cloud and virtualization. Um, Montana was a special case for us because it represented the first cluster that we fully managed um, for them. Despite the fact that was done out of Ireland and they were based in the US, we still managed to provide that full service to them. The outcomes that we gave to them by doing that um, were, were, were basically the key reason that we were able to, to win that deal. Um, affordable scalability was, was huge for them and they needed to um, increase the size of their cluster in small increments and we were able to plan and foresee how they did that uh, and then help them in, uh, implement it. Ease of uh, administering, burst to off-premise resources, so we have our own um, own resources that they can burst out to um, in, a, in a hybrid solution. Ease of use for students, they needed to be able to give a, a, a single pane of glass where students could go in, spin up their own VMs for their own applications and, and have ease of access through that. And of course, reliability and continuity of service. Next up is the Sanger Institute uh, in, in Cambridge. Um, it's one of the world's premier genomic research centers. Um, late last year, we helped them to deploy their own science as a service cloud. In doing so, we've helped them to open up their cosmic database, um, which is one of the, I think it is the largest um, database of its kind in the world. And we helped them to open up to collaborative analysis on a global level. Um, this allowed for the study of mutations at, of, uh, of cancers at a much, much higher resolution. Um, and by delivering via an OpenStack cloud, um, it's provided a platform for the global research um, of cancer um, as a community as a whole. Last case study is Oxford University. So over the last few months um, and, and years, we've been providing Oxford with uh, a number of different uh, technologies. Um, all as, uh, as part of the SKA project. Um, we've been working with them in designing and providing, providing proof of concept data cleaning nodes. Um, data processing performance requirements are extremely high, as you can imagine. So we've delivered them most recently with all flash solutions accelerated by uh, Tesla K40s. Um, and they went in just a couple of months ago. Um, testing on them is, is ongoing, but initial feedback is extremely positive. 
So that kind of brings me to an end of the, the blatant sales pitch. Thank you for your attention. If there's um, anything that's caught your, your attention or anything of interest to you that you'd like to um, potentially get remote access to and test your own application on, um, we've got a table out the back, so please swing by and uh, come and say hi. Thank you.